Right now, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, all the buzz is around number 34. But back in 1993, the buzz was about number 93. Doug Gilmore. It is Gilmore waiting, waiting around the net, waiting. He's up. Gilmore! Solo job! And he's won it in a second overtime period. Best game in the best fashion right here. I'm going left. No, I'm going right. And Joseph's going the wrong way, and Gilmore slides it in for the winning goal early in the second overtime. Three minutes. 16 seconds to be precise in a second overtime period and this crowd at Maple Leaf Gardens is wild again. It is one of the greatest goals ever scored by a Toronto Maple Leaf. Doug Gilmore has talked about it plenty but let's hear about that goal from Curtis Joseph's perspective. Cujo first of all thanks so much for joining us and take us back May 3rd 1993 Norris Division Final double OT just over three minutes in and that happens. What do you recall? Oh, I remember the series very vividly. It was so uh, stinking hot in the in Maple Leaf Gardens. It was incredibly muggy, and uh, it was a long game. Obviously, a lot of sweat. A lot of it was tough on both sides. Obviously, I really bit on that uh, faked wraparound on his forehand, and uh, he knew what he was doing. It looked pretty obviously he was going to his backhand. Uh, it was a great move. I. Myself and I think Brett Hedekin really fell for it. We really committed, overcommitted, and uh, it was a great goal for Lee fans and for Doug Gilmore. But um, I, when I talk to Dougie, I'm always like, Dougie, you must have scored another big goal in your career. This is the only goal I ever hear about. He goes, he goes, yeah, Stanley Cup winner in Calgary. I'm like, yeah. Why doesn't anybody talk about that goal? <laughs> you know, you're right about it being so high. You stopped. You missed 64 shots on net. Uh, that game against you know air conditioning at Maple Leaf Gardens uh, double overtime you just swept the Hawks Maple Leafs had beaten the Detroit Red Wings that was a really emotionally charged building and one other event happened in that overtime that doesn't get a lot of play as well and it happened in the first overtime Mike Foligno comes in and somehow he ends up spinning and kicking you in the head and your mask went off like the cork out of a champagne bottle I remember watching that game Curtis and thinking he's not coming back in Oh my gosh, I just watched it and uh, haven't seen it in a long time. That was a roundhouse kick uh, GSP would be uh, proud of. It, it really was, uh, uh, it looked deliberate to me, obviously. Um, he should have got 10 games for that. Now that I see it, I'm like, how did he not get 10 games for that? It was extremely dangerous uh, roundhouse kick. It was obvious. Uh, it made me mad to watch it, actually. It <laughs> made me mad to watch it. And I remember, I don't think I was concussed, and I don't know how I wasn't concussed, because I've never been concussed, but it was, my jaw was, uh, you know, was really, really sore for a long time after that. You, uh, we can tell still, Curtis, that uh, the passion still burns uh, inside you. Thanks so much for sharing your memories of 93. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys.